All right, back to work. Let's see if we can make that shot now. Excuse me, folks. I really thought I had it that time. Don't even really need to track him down. Do you hear the chitters? 
visit. Or maybe not. There he is. He had to have heard that landing even if he didn't hear the fire arrow. Goodness. make one side remark while we're sitting here hoping that eventually this will happen. You may have noticed a dramatic decline in the amount of Burrick traffic. This doesn't necessarily mean they're stuck on the light post that I was worried about earlier. What it does show you is something the Dark Engine does which can inadvertently lead to a lot of problems. In order to save on engine performance, the developers intentionally made it so that patrollers would basically shut down and hold in place if they were far enough away from Garrett and reactivate when he got within a certain range of them again. That's what's happened to the Burricks. The only patroller that's in range of us right now is the Spider, but if we were to, as you've seen, go park on the bridge for a while, we would be close enough again to wherever the game shut down their patrols that they would reactivate and we'd start to see the Burricks again. If I ever manage to do this, then you'll see that.
Oh yeah, that's a second alert. I could pretend it's not, but it is. So B is really making a lot of trouble for me. I knew it was in search mode anyway, I heard it chittering.
have noticed his patrol gradually varying as more and more time goes by. I'm told that eventually he'll drown. I don't want to wait that out just sitting here. That feels a little cheeky to me, especially when people have said the shot is possible without doing so. But what I am starting to think is that the people who have made the shot have done so because of some variance in his patrol, eventually taking him just a little bit farther away, or perhaps putting something in between him and the grotto. I don't know. The old reports saying they successfully ghosted this mission are almost summary in their nature, just saying yes, it was ghosted. But they were made by people who were very well acquainted with the ghosting rules, so... I believe they knew that this shot couldn't trigger a second alert. But there are no real reports on how this was done. I've not heard any chittering, have you? I hear no chittering, but where did he go? There he is. Now he's stuck. Question is, did he go into alert mode? I never heard any chittering this time. Did you? I think we did it. I honestly think we did it. No chittering, no raised feelers. I don't care if he got stuck. I'm calling it done. All right, let's move on then. <clears throat> With that done, this little prick showed no signs of having seen us. I'm calling it finished. Now, I'm gonna make a real save right here. Let's leave one before the shot, just in case we somehow learn that we were mistaken. Now in the interest of being supreme, let's go ahead and douse these torches again. There's no need to keep them lit after all. But we have made the shot, finally. That took a long time, but we got it done. And obviously there's no way to reclose this secret door, so that's not required having doused the torches and seen it relight or stay open anyway. Now we move into here. We see the door with the bars in front of it. Here's the trick. You have to put Looks like this place was built by my old pals, the Keepers. I wonder what they're hiding in here. Now, the first trick to open the gate. I can't remember which one it is. I think it's that. No, that's the door. Okay, so we need to stack some rubble on this piece, which will open the gate. We can then block the gate with this other piece. Leave the rubble where it is. Stand on this other one. Now I think we should be able to rub through the door. Can't fit. Have to block it earlier. That's fine, that's fine. I have to block it farther open. Rather. Come on, come on. There you go. 
of the head over here. Take back the rubble. Perfect. Now we can run through. Stop right away as we do it, though. <clears throat> now, hit that lever. The entrance has been opened from the other side, so we can put all of our rubble back. Move right on in. And I'll do a real save here, too. I'm still not... I still can't quite believe that we actually made the shot, but the spider exhibited no search behavior, no chitters, no feelers in the air, no nothing, so I'm assuming we did. Anyway, this hallway is dark, but on either side you can see rows of pressure plates. The trick here is pretty simple, just walk straight down the middle, nothing will happen. Obviously there's nothing in here, you can make as much noise as you want to. Head down these stairs and around this corner. You see the big pressure plate in front of the door. The door also takes a long time to pick open, and it triggers this wall behind us. And, you know, triggering the trap is a bust, and we don't want to do that. But it's pretty easy to avoid the trap altogether. We just hop over this wall with a handy-dandy rope arrow. ba -doom. And there we are. All right. Now, go left first. We find ourselves in one library room. We need both of these keys, but let's read the documents first. There are two. Keeper Lucas, we have received word of your fears, and we understand and indeed share them. We did not lightly take the decision to involve ourselves in this matter. However, we believe that we were compelled to act. Were the trickster not opposed, he could bring destruction upon the entire city and upon us as well. We have endeavored to conceal our efforts as best we can. I can only hope that we have been successful. Yours in knowledge, Keeper Andrus. Keeper Andrus. We are relieved to hear that you have successfully contained the destruction. It was for just such a contingency that the elemental wards have been saved these many years, and we support your decision to use them now, as the peril that you have described is grave indeed. We urge you to hide the talismans with great care, as their discovery could lead to another such catastrophe. We worry also that your actions have exposed the truth of our existence to the world, which we must not allow. Yours in knowledge, Keeper Lucas. So we'll go ahead and pick up both this red key and this, what ends up being called the portal key. And close this door behind us. The red key will unlock the other door in here. As we move in here, we see two things. A big map of the city, which shows us the locations of the talismans. Height. We've, well, we've got the four city districts in the northwest High Town, and over, I guess, either in High Town or outside the city is the Talisman of Earth. Old Quarter, we see the Talisman of Water. Downtown, we see the Talisman of Air. And in New Market, we see the Talisman of Fire. And there's another book in here. Upon this map are the locations of the elemental talismans, which alone can unlock the wards placed upon the cathedral door. Their locations are recorded here in the event that we may one day find it necessary to re-enter the cathedral. The portal key in the library must be used to access the lost city entrance where the talisman of fire is being kept. The water talisman has been hidden in a shrine located in the caverns below the old quarter of the city. The talisman of air is being kept by the Hammerites, and the earth talisman was left to the Hand Brotherhood. Here's another difference between the original Thief games and Thief Gold. If you're playing the original Thief, two of these missions are gone, and you'll see that the fire and water talismans are both in the Lost City, and the earth and air talismans are both being kept by the Hammerites, but that's the only difference here. We now have some new objectives. We no longer are going to find a way to get inside the cathedral and steal the eye. We're also no longer going to exit the ruins. 
but we have a new objective which we've already completed which is to get the portal key out of the keepers library so now all that's left is looting grab 2,000 in loot locate and steal a serpentile torque and leave some coins on the watchman's grave for good luck so like I said we kind of skipped to the end and <laughs> did that first but that's okay so we'll lock this door behind us Go over here and put the red key back where we found it. Close that door behind us. We can leave this area just by jumping onto the wall and avoiding the pressure plate. Uh, I almost forgot about these plates. Avoid them too. As we leave here, just flip the lever and rush out thing will be nice and closed behind us and that's done and done we move on the rest of the mission you'll be happy to know is much easier than everything we've already accomplished the rest of the mission is just actual sneaking No craziness like what we just went through. Well, there's the spider. <laughs> but that's not a good spot to wait for him. to wait for him to turn around and come on back or follow him back out remember there is one stuck on the light post which means we have four burricks to worry about in this area plus the spider personally I think it's easier to get across the bridge from here even though it's more distance, we can see everything more clearly. We just need the barracks out of the way, we need the spider over in the grotto. It'd be good if that didn't happen. Alright, good. The spider's headed into the grotto. And this burrick is hell-bent on coming right over here. Oh, but good. If we're crouched, he doesn't see us. Burrick Parade! To friend the spider again. You gave us a lot of trouble, Hoss. I bet you don't feel the least bit bad about it. This is not a safe spot to save, by the way. Should be obvious. <clears throat> that was close. But the Burrick didn't react, so he must not have seen us.
When this area is clear of barracks, go ahead and move right in. First thing you'll want to do is drop into this pit here. I don't think we need a rope arrow, but maybe we do. Yeah, we do. Oh, fire a rope arrow right into here. And come on down. It's hard to see with it so dark, but there are patches of metal floor down in these sewers. That's why I'm creeping, in case that wasn't obvious. When you get to this first, more open, circular area, if you head over to this niche here, you can't see it without a jump, but there is a gold plate in here that you want, that you can pick up just like that, which brings our loot total to 550. Remember loot? <laughs> Uh, I get a little afraid when I do a big complicated thing like what I did earlier. Hop back up, retrieve the rope as always. Jump up here, jump across, and be careful because we're on tile floor. And hop up here in this burned out little room. I could have sworn there was something up here. Here they are. There are three fire arrows, which I won't pick up, and a book we need to read. The foolish old man who currently owns the Serpentile Torque lives on a barren side street west of the Cathedral Street drawbridge. I visited his small but wealthy residence last week in order to purchase the torque from him, but he obstinately deflected my arguments and offers. He says it is a custom of his people to present a gift of such beauty to their brides-to-be before marriage. At seventy years of age, I don't know what sort of maiden he thinks will be tempted to wed him. I'm not sure if I should now proceed to use force or perhaps find a way to pilfer the torque from him. I understand that there is a thief one can hire who lives nearby, close to DePerrin Street. So there we go. Got some info. Now, if we go... <coughs> I knew that wasn't going to work. I was trying to make it to the wall. Now, if you drop back down over there... Behind that door, if you pick it open, there's a breath potion, which I don't need. Head back over here once again. Finally head up to the top of this hill. Drop down. Be careful in here. There's another spider. He's got a pretty short little patrol route. But there is plenty of room to avoid him. He also, he, it's very dark, so I know you probably can't see. His chitters don't mean he's in search mode, reason being that his patrol involves a couple of pauses, stops on the ends, and when they aren't moving, they do those idle chitters. Anyway, there are two pieces of loot down here. There's that vase worth 50, which brings our total to 600. Over in the other little corner, you can find a goblet worth 15, total 615, and a healing potion, which I'll ignore, which you can pick up at your leisure. And follow the spider out of here when opportunity permits. And head on up here. Over to the left, we just see some bars, which we're not interested in. We'd have to bash them open, which would bust our ghost in terms of property damage. And I just realized that, well, I don't know. The spider didn't show any signs of search mode. It didn't start making noise. I may just desperately want to believe I managed it, but I really didn't notice anything. So, let's move through this dark room, no trouble. And over here, 
we find another fire shadow. Haven't seen one of these since the Bone Horde. These monsters only exist in Thief Gold. If you're playing regular Thief, this room will be empty as well as the Mystic Soul Room in Bone Horde would have been. Anyway, down here over in this corner there are some rope arrows if you're interested in picking them up. I'm just interested in getting up this ladder. And somehow getting off silently, which can be tough. Well, it shouldn't be that hard. Let's just drop down a little bit so we can handle. There we go. No problem. Keep navigating through these very dark areas, but you'd be insane to turn the lights on. And we're back out at Market Street, which is just a patrol area for six zombies. <clears throat> I just want to get into that door across the road. Shouldn't be too hard with the lights off. No problem at all. Over to the left, this chest has a ring, brings our total worth 100, brings our total to 715. From here, I want to hit one of those wooden rafters. <laughs> Let's do a real save. From here, I want to hit one of those wooden rafters above the windows across the street with a rope arrow. I want to hit the one on the left, not just one of them. There we go. That all set. Climb the rope. Hopefully Garrett can actually keep hold of it. The ropes are so glitchy. From here, jump off to the left. Trying to be quiet. Find a vase over here, worth a hundred, total 815. There are also, I think over on the other side, that's 12 broadhead arrows, if you're interested in such things. I'll jump back on the rope. And this time, jump in the window. Grab the rope on our way in. Up here, there is a fire arrow somewhere. There it is. I'm not interested. I'm just gonna head on down here. Walk down these stairs. So you move through here. There's a niche over here that holds a mine. Head back out through the fireplace, which is the way we originally came in. And this chest has a purse worth a hundred for a total of nine fifteen. Plenty of zombies. We need to get across that bridge and around the corner. It's kind of the one brightly lit problem area on Market Street, but Zombies have really dull senses, so this won't be too hard. We'll just have to wait for an opening. It'd be really nice if the zombies and Burricks would get into a fight with each other without me having to induce it because that wouldn't bust the ghost, but alas, such things are not to be. Of course, it wouldn't get rid of any of the zombies because, you know, zombies are invincible. They always win the fight eventually. another one coming, which is too bad, I really thought I was about to have an opening. Maybe I do. No, definitely not. But perhaps we can squeak through behind him. 
Oh. <laughs> All right, there are two more zombies over here. I thought that the first clumping of two was the original guys coming back. I did not realize that their patrols were so long. Actually, probably means that if Market Street itself is open, and I can follow some of them across. They have a long patrol route once they get to the other side. Let's give that a whirl. Maybe we can hide here. No, no such luck. Here? Nope, still too bright. Here? Nope, still too bright. Here? Yes. Found the good midpoint. This is exactly what I wanted. Now, from here. Oops. Don't want to make that amount of noise. So just get down the hill. Jump on this wall. Well, don't jump. Mantle. And mantle onto this higher wall. Be careful crossing this bit of metal. Move into here. And here's the oddly silent door. It makes so much less noise than all of the others until you actually open it. Anyway, we'll shut that behind us. We're now clear of the zombies, so congratulations on that. Another very dark area, but as I've said before, you'd be a fool to turn the lights on when you're trying to sneak. And we come to this large, isolated house. This is where we'll find the Serpentile Torque. The door is locked and cannot be... Oh, it can be picked, but we don't need to pick it. We slide the doormat aside, we find a key, which we'll return once we're done in here. Now, inside this house are two hammer haunts. I won't lie to you, I really love those monsters. I think they're scary as hell, mostly because of the noise they make, and if you happen to get attacked by one, you're going to lose. Over on this table is a vase worth 50, which brings our total to 965. Inside the chest are two moss arrows, which I won't bother with. Here come the haunts. Obviously, we need to go upstairs. We'll lock that door behind us. I'm going to wait over here for the two of them to get back in the front hall. in behind them and go upstairs. Once we get upstairs, things get a little more problematic. If you're interested in holy water, you have to cross the tile floor and pick open that chest, which has a holy water vial in it. I don't care about holy water, so I can ignore that chest. We come over here. The key doesn't work, so we have to pick the chest open. be careful because the rattle of the lock picks can actually sometimes trigger a level one alert from those guys. You know, I have to say, if the shot went well, it's possible we have supreme mode intact. You know, if the shot really went well, which I can't vouch for for sure. 
I have no reason to believe it didn't, but... That is the Serpentile Torque. It's worth 350, it brings our loot total to 1315, and it by itself is one of our objectives. So that's done. Let's head on back out. That's everything we need out of this house. Let's tail these guys downstairs again. Wait over here for them to head back upstairs. Lock this door behind us. Return the key to its little hidey hole. Put the mat back on top of it. It's as though we were never here. <sighs> Mantle back up here. Back through this door to the drawbridge. Don't get far enough out to let the zombies see you. We need to wait for a little bit of an opening here. Oops. What we want to do is get to the other side of the river without hurting ourselves. Which ought to be possible if we use the lamp post right there to break our fall. Assuming Garrett's willing to jump, which, you know, can sometimes be a tall order. You'd be surprised how uncooperative this thief is when you push that space bar. It's for your own good. There we go. That is worth a real save. Alright, over here is a metal door we can lock pick there's a diamond over in this corner brings our loot total to 1415 it's worth a hundred right back out the door move on through here we're back in the area with five zombies and two hammer spirits. There are plenty of places to hide, but and they all have pretty long patrols, so it's hard to know where they are at any given moment. But right up here, you can find a vase worth 50, brings our total to 1465. a zombie there. wonder if he's too close already. Yes, he is. But he might not have been here at the start. Just to squeak over into this corner. We want to mantle into this window right here. Once again, no problem. <clears throat> if you head out onto these stone beams, you can find a plate worth another 50 for a total of 1515 loot. And, sorry, we actually want to <sighs> mantle up here. Now, we can pick that ground level door that is pretty difficult with seven patrols walking around because it's a very difficult door. It moves slowly and there are three lockpick switches. So what we want to do instead is manage to jump and mantle into this window like that. Grab that vase, worth 100, brings our total to 1615. Through here you can find 10 broadhead arrows and if you hop across the rafters 
you can find two water arrows. All of that obviously of no interest to me. Now, it's much easier to pick the door from the inside where you're in the shadow. I don't want to trip a first alert when this door opens. So let's just be careful. Okay, looks like we're good. You hear that person with normal, or that patrol with normal sounding footsteps? That's the hammer spirit. So, out here. Oh, I don't think this is a very good shadow. It might be. Yeah, he's gonna spot us. Maybe if we hide just a little further away from the actual corner, we'll be okay. Nice loop there, buddy. Doesn't help me at all. That's going to end up being a real problem if he's going to do that every time. We managed to get over here instead. Hopefully he won't loop. Good. I don't know why he looped in the first place. Anyway, over in this house, inside the fireplace, just got to Get a little momentum to get over that hump. Can find a vase worth a hundred brings our total to seventeen fifteen. Kind of have to patiently wait for that area to be empty of patrollers, but shouldn't be too hard. And then in here, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's over here. Oh, it's not here either. I was right the first time. It's in this building. Obviously, I'm going to have to reload. But maybe. Maybe if it was over here. No, no, no. Okay, I was right. It's in here. Just having trouble. There's, there, a ladder. Ha! <laughs> I knew there was an easy way up. What I was after was just this papyrus. Constable Tool is a degenerate. Every time we have a blackout, I have to go haul his ass out of the pub to get him to unlock the maintenance cell for the Market Street power grid. If he wasn't the Baron's nephew, they would have fired him months ago. There you have that. A little bit more flavor. Now... <clears throat> You see that doorway? If you go through there, you can find a hole in the ceiling, which leads to a uh, breath potion. Something I'm not interested in. Back down to the ground floor, into this nice dark corner. down this hill right here and we're in a much easier area this is the little corner of the map where we actually started the mission believe it or not there's just one wandering zombie this whole area you have to be careful of holes in the floor here though if you head up to the top of this fallen rafter you can find a moss arrow which I'm not interested in 
right here. Go ahead and drop down when the Cray Man is away, which he is right now. If we go straight at first, we will find a golden goblet. Worth 25 brings our total to 1740. Now, there are three Burricks that patrol this cave system. I'm pretty sure that they can come all the way back here. But I've never actually seen them this far. I guess the direction is south. Anyway, there's a lot of stuff in here. In the middle, if you're interested, are a noisemaker arrow, a rope arrow, and the yellow key. I don't need any of that. What I am interested in are in the four corners of the room where you can find a piece of loot in each corner. Here we have a gold goblet worth 25, brings our total to 1765. And what do you know? I see a Burrick. Well, here would be more accurate, but just be careful. This area is big enough that sneaking around them is pretty easy, even though it's well lit. Over in this corner, we find a purse worth a hundred, brings our total to eighteen sixty-five. We push over to the other side we find a vase worth another hundred total 1965 over here in this last corner we find a purple goblet 15 brings our total to 1980 squeeze into one of these shadows and give it a quick save now I know we're well within their patrol route, so be careful of the three Burricks. As you can see, there are plenty of little side shadows to hide in and wait for openings, should they happen to be nearby. I don't hear any Burrick, so I'll skip that one opening. Here's the reason we came through these tunnels. Oh, we might have to. Yeah, he heard us. Might have to abort that attempt and come back in there later. You might only see one, you might see none of the three Burricks, because further up into the sewers is a spot where they pretty routinely get stuck in their patrols. Anyway, over here next to the grate is another purple goblet. 15 brings our total to 1995. That's it. I happen to know that there are no Burricks between me and where I'm going, so... Head on back. Like I said, the uh, so far, we have Supreme Ghost intact, save the potential bust of the fire arrows. I don't know why, I just have this nagging feeling that I didn't make the shot, even though I could see no, see, n neither see nor hear, there's the phrase I'm looking for, any activity from the spider. Be careful now, because we're in the patrol area of the Cray Man. You see him there. You see that he too is prone to weird little loops in his patrol, as are many of the patrollers in this mission. Especially as the mission takes you a longer time. Anyway, if you pop into this turn, in this dark room with all these ruined barrels, you can find two more water arrows if you're so inclined.
You move into this pool room. On either side, you can find a moss arrow, if you're interested. And as you go around to the back, to where these bones are, you can find a gold hammer, worth 75, total 2,070. That solves our loot objective. Of course, we're gonna find all the loot, as always. Inside the pool itself, you can find two more water arrows. I, however, am not interested. Let's see if the Cray Man is still stuck. We're gonna be in... We're gonna be in trouble if he is, because we need to go back that way. He does appear to be stuck. Let's see if a little magic quick load can resolve his problem. It can! Good. Sometimes it is that easy. Quick save, quick load, and <clears throat> the patrol is unstuck. Anyway, when he clears the way back to the entrance, get a rope arrow out, pop back to ground level. Obviously grab the rope, as always. Now in here, it can be hard to see with the lights off, but there are wooden rafters crisscrossing this room. We want to get up onto one of them and grab the rope. Once you're up here, you can start off over here. In the window, you find a gold goblet, 25. Total 2,095. If you hop across these other rafters, listen for the zombie and for the cray man because they could both hear you if they're close enough. Over at the end of this rafter is a diamond worth 100. Total 2,195. Drop back down, well, Garrett got stuck. Drop back down, head through here. Inside this room, there's a gold goblet up there, or I'm sorry, a purple goblet. Grab that, brings your total to 2210, it's worth 15. Heading back this way. Take the other dark exit. See this fallen rafter here? Move up it. And, oh, Garrett. I hear the zombie somewhere nearby, but I think he's far enough away that he won't. Well, I don't have to jump anyway. Under the pipe is another vase, worth 50, total 2260. Over here on the edge, if you're interested, is another healing potion. Now, if you pick open that door, it takes you into the weapons dealer's house. I'm not going to bother, but inside there you can find 12 broadhead arrows on the ground floor. And then upstairs you can find two flash bombs, and in the locked chest you can find two mines. Like I said, I'm not interested in any of it. I'm gonna ignore all of it, but it's there. Now, we're back at the very beginning. But if you had this fallen building, if you had around it, over to this dark niche, over underneath it, you can find a plate worth 50, total 2310. Now we're gonna head back the way we came, or the way we went, sorry, at the very start, which by the way was right over there. Being wary of the one zombie who patrols around here. And hope we're clear to head up this ramp. Squeeze into this darkness and make a real save. 
Now over in here, as with most things, they're hard to see in the dark, but there's some rope rafters up there you can fire a rope arrow into. Use the rope to head up to the top level. Up here you can sneak across into what I think is the old guard tower, but you know, no way to know for sure. There's a noisemaker arrow on the ground. There's a vase here in this niche worth 100 brings our total to 2410. I think we actually need to use the rope arrow to get down without taking any damage. There we go. Now we're back down. You can hear some heavy traffic here. We're in the area of five zombies, two hammer spirits. We want to get up that stone ramp across from us now. Oh, I thought he was... thought we were clear of him already. Let's give him a little more time. Get up this ramp. Find a good hiding spot. This corner should suffice. Rather find something better if I can. Anyway, through that door, you can find the thief's house. You can pick it open. You have to worry about a live mine you have to sneak around if you do go inside. Inside that house you can find three flash bombs and three noisemaker arrows on the floor and in the two chests one has three mines and one has three rope arrows none of which we need. I should have mentioned by the way that next to those barrels if you want it is yet another healing potion. You head over here to the top of this whatever. Down here is a tiara worth 125. Brings our total to 2535. If you move here into the apothecary's house, which you can pick open if you want, there is a breath potion and three fire arrows. Not interested in any of that either, so let's head back down out of here. Like I said, if you do want that stuff, feel free. You don't have to ghost like I do. I'll still tell you where everything is if you're a more normal player who likes to get ammunition and use it on your enemies. Now we'll pop back through here towards the sewer entrance we swam through at the very beginning with this one Burrick. I'm kind of surprised he hasn't gotten into a fight with the zombies yet, because they can see each other, I would think. Doesn't matter much, though. Now, when he gives us a bit of an opening, I'll tell you where you can find some even more stuff. If you jump onto that metal tower thingamajig, and then jump up above the walkway, you can see the lever next to the pipe from here. If you flip that lever, It'll open a door over in the corner that's at the top of the ladder. You can sort of see it from here. Anyway, if you want it, if you flip the lever and open that door, you can find two fire arrows, two water arrows, and a breath potion. As always, not interested. Now let's slip into the sewers just like we did before. Hope the Burrick doesn't hear us. He heard us. I'm not sure how I avoided it for the first time, because this is usually a pretty big problem. Maybe if we pop into the other little gateway, we'll be better off. Yep, 
Sounds like that was the key. So dive into the sewers just like we did at the beginning. Here's a place to recover your air that for some whatever reason I skipped the first time. Now if you swim down here, at the very end you can find a purse. Worth a hundred brings our total to twenty-six thirty-five, and that is the last piece of loot. We have everything. So As before, I have to say, if the fire arrow shot worked, then so far we've got perfect Supreme Thief intact, because I haven't heard any alerts. Um, by the way, floating in the water in that passage, if you're interested, you can find a moss arrow. Quiet in here, like we were before. Because the Cray Man can still see and hear us. If you need it, for whatever reason, I don't think there's any use for it at this point, you can hop over to where he's patrolling, you can find a yellow key identical to the one that was available down in the Burrick Tunnels. Let's rope arrow up like we did before. <sighs> Grab the arrow. Cut over here. Mindful of the Cray Man, as always. And get out to Market Street, the same way we did initially. One last thing to do. Get to the Watchman's Grave and drop the coinage. So, <laughs> wait for an opening. We've got quite the zombie herd here. Five of the six, all together. How about that? Shut the door behind us. Pop through this doorway to the right. Save like we did before. Pop through the fireplace. Head up the stairs. We have been here before, if you're wondering. <laughs> now, through here, we need to get to that wooden door across the road. We need to manage to do it quietly, which, what do you know, we did on the first try. Pick this lock. Through the door. Close it behind us. Open this door. Close it behind us. You hear the spiders. But with the lights off, they've got almost no chance of seeing us. So we navigate over here. I think we can make this drop without taking any damage. But I'm not certain. So, let's pop one last rope arrow, get down that way. I'm worried about the noise. Oh good, it's silent. And, to finish the level, drop our coins on the watchman's grave. And the mission will end. Alright! Let's look at our stats first of all. We've got 1 hour, 43 minutes, 30 seconds of time. We found 2635 loot out of 2635. Seven locks picked. No backstabs, no knockouts, no damage dealt or taken, no healing taken, nothing and nobody killed. 
for the campaign so far, that's been 21 hours, 22 minutes, and 1 second. We found 16,329 loot. We did deal 20 damage in the training mission, but we've received none at all. Now, I still have a sketchy feeling about the shot with the fire arrow to open the Keeper's Grotto. That would be our one and only bust of both Ghost Mode and Supreme Ghost Mode, if it was a bust. The spider didn't chitter, and I never saw him raise his feelers, and I kept track of him. But I don't know, I just have a weird feeling about it, so I'm going to report this as a potential bust, but I'm going to claim success on the mission in terms of... Ghost and Supreme Ghost, actually, because I don't think I violated any Supreme rules other than that either. And finally, of course, because we found all the loot, it would be a perfect version of all of those modes. If you feel like the shot was off, then that would be uh, the one bust for the entire mission. So anyway, that's the Haunted Cathedral. Another one of my favorite missions is coming up, only available in Thief Gold, the Mage Towers. That's next. But until then, I will see you folks later. Bye-bye.